Well, hey everybody, welcome back to Dirt Water and West of Lothen. My name is Bear. I can't help but throw on just like the, the tiniest little bit of southern drawl at least as we bring these videos back in this series. And my god! All of a sudden this map got a lot bigger. Wow! Wow! Okay, yeah, this is... <laughs> holy crap, the scope has just expanded dramatically. We now have access to the Snake Pit Mine, Fort Cowardice, and the Railroad Map. Uh... Oh! Okay, apparently that's an option. You spot a cemetery on the horizon. The lettering over the gate says the Dave Yard, which seems oddly specific. Let's, let's go there now. Yeah, that seems good. Let's do that. Interesting. Off to the Dave Yard. Oh, yeah, this is, we sort of just jumped right into the fray here, didn't we? No problem with me. Well, now here it is right here's a spooky establishment. And most graveyards don't leave piles of bones out on the lawn, yeah? Anything something fishy's going on? We'll see. We'll see. These remains look pretty restless. We'll, we'll put them down. We gotta let these folks uh, rest easy here. And uh, it looks like we got Pete in the mix as well. Our lava fava is still doing plenty of damage. Might as well go ahead and use that. Seems good to me. And let's see what Pete's capable of. I'm guessing, uh, oh, Pete will hit the target with his lantern. Dealing six hot damage, and people will give you or whoever a pep talk, raising all stats by two. Let's bark at the moon, this snake! Oh, that hurts a lot. Okay, so that's... That's gonna be bad for Pete. Pete should be able to kill this guy, I imagine, with his lantern, though, right? Yeah, let's go for it. A schmackadoo! There we go. You made the restless remains more restful. Eleven experience and two skull chips. Hooray! Well, that's probably enough for me to be able to level something up, isn't it? We also, uh, have... Skull chips. Unless they were good for keeping somebody's brain salsa inside, but not anymore. Alright, then. Let's see, I probably got a level up or two I can utilize here, right? Might want to increase my muscle and moxie, considering I did sacrifice those by, uh, swapping my offhand. I think I'll do that. Kinda like having those balanced out that way. And then let's keep our 13 XP for now. And, uh, maybe... Well, you know what? Let's improve Hellbender as well. Plus three spell damage seems pretty, uh, significant, and then a- ooh, plus seven. The next rank of ex 50 experience. Okay, so that's gonna be something I think I want to upgrade quite a bit as well. Here lies Dave C. Went down to a theater. Here lies Dave B. Died with his boots on, but not his pants. Dig up the grave. Dig up the grave, just detect the veracity of the epitaph. Sure enough, boots, but no pants. Brown boots! I don't think I had any boots before, but no pants, sadly. Yeah, I'm- I'm- Suffering from that as well. Plus one maximum action points. That's awesome. That's really good, isn't it? That means I can use my skill once more. That's fantastic. Here lies Dave J. This this Dave Yard has not uh, failed to meet expectations thus far. Let's put these guys down for good and just see just how much uh, that statistical difference is making for me. The Lava Fava is still only doing uh, 10 damage. However, I can use it twice now, which is fantastic. Hell yeah. And let's just go ahead and bash him with the lantern. Smash! Okay, yeah, Pete is uh, vulnerable, I suppose. And there is Lava Fava number two. That newly acquired second action point. Yeah! Yeah, buddy, 11 experience and a skeleton bone. What's that do for me? Sale value of five meat, okay. Easy enough. Well, that was nice. Here lies Dave L. Died of a heart attack, see you in negative 36 years. So there's a, there's probably like a clever joke in there somewhere. Dave G was looking to the sky to save him, but even the sky can't save a feller like that from 40 angry bears. <laughs> Bones are jumping around to beat the dickens, we'll beat the dickens out of them! More than capable of doing that, and I, I am loving just tossing the lava fava at him, but... Sadly, the melee attack appears to do just about the same, so... Let's roll, roll with that, I guess. Rock and roll. That's roll. That's what that word is. Spooky damage! Oh, God! Didn't realize we were susceptible to spookiness. Eleven more experience. We're getting a lot of experience from this place. Twenty-five unused. I think we'll still save up for Hellbender to see if maybe that spell damage bonus makes a difference. Is that affecting this? I hope so. Base damage of hot. That is a spell, right? I have to assume that's a spell. Maybe I'll level this up. I do have 25 experience. That would improve the base damage to 10 from 5. That seems like a really good upgrade. And then, ooh, 
sets enemies on fire on the next rank. Yeah, that seems awesome. Gravedigger left his lunch here. Vienna blood sausages and the thermos of spiked coffee. Increase your speed by one for the day. Increase your muscle by three. We're getting some good stuff. The Dave Yard Mausoleum. Uh, no extra fight there, okay. This is one of those things they have in mausoleums, you know, one of those big marble things with drawers full of skeletons. Open a whole bunch! That was, that was maybe unwise. I don't know if I necessarily wanted to do that. Uh, I do have dynamite if I feel like I need it. Let's have a look at how tough these guys are. Dead-Eyed Dave Wales, Mysterious Dave Walker, and Gritty Dave Connor. They're all pretty tough. I think this guy up front's gonna be the more, uh, threatening of them all. I could use Bean Shield. Maybe a smart idea this time around, give myself a little bit of armor. I think it might be dynamite time. I'm gonna throw maybe one of my dynamite sticks and I can kill one of these guys. Let's throw it at, uh, Dave Walker and get the kill. Boom. Yes! One down. Uh, oh, that, right, yeah, that doesn't have my turn, I totally forgot about that. Okay, so let's use, uh, Lava Fava then. 13 damage on, well, if I use that on him, I don't think I'll actually be able to kill him with my, uh, with my... Crazy Pete here. So instead, I'll just focus on this, I guess. So if I do this... He still needs one more attack. Oh, goodness. Oh, Pete! Oh, God, buddy. Hold on. Hold on, buddy. We'll fix it. We'll fix it. I think I just... I do need to use my second one here. Okay. Oh, Pete. Pete, can we keep you alive through this? I don't know. Maybe I'll, uh... I'll sacrifice myself to give... Myself the stat bonus, but maybe not. Hopefully he'll just choose to attack me and I'll get lucky with this. We'll see. He did not. Yeah, there goes Pete. Son of a bitch. Okay, well. No more, uh... No more of the Lava Fava, unfortunately, and this guy is tough. But I think I'm taking him down. Pretty sure we got it. Okay, good, good, good. Three up and three down is a thing they would say about this if baseball analogies were a thing now. 33 experience, a gold tooth, and a skeleton bone. Pete's alive, right? We didn't lose Pete permanently there. He didn't go back to base and have to reload. Hopefully not. I think I want to save the experience and upgrade Lava Fava. Burning target seems pretty awesome. The Dave Yard Tomb. Big stone sarcophagus. It's a pile of mostly burned rags that maybe used to be a person. Gore splattered scroll, human ashes, and a receipt for a robe. I need a handstand on my lantern again. I'm really good at that now. Uh, a receipt for the delivery of 150 black silk robes. It's time you started gathering clues about the whole per perambulating dead situation that's going on around these parts. Grab a notebook and paperclip the receipt to the f first page, the Necromancer Journal. Read it. You open your Necromancer Journal and examine the information you've collected so far. You found a receipt for delivery of robes. See, there's a surcharge for delivery past Boulder Pass. Means that their lair is definitely west of the mountains. Progress! I'm a genius. Okay. And, uh, let's examine what appears to be an attempt at a pentagram. It looks more like just sort of a, a mix of snowflakes at this point. Pretty cute, actually. It's like if a children or a, a child attempted to summon Satan. Here lies Dave D. The truth was out there. It killed him. Dave G. Murdered by a different feller named Dave G. <laughs> Mostly just boring broken bones, but you do find a skull with a weird tag on it. I could look at that. Inter-Cemetery Loan. The tag on this skull has a serial number, and it says it was borrowed from the Submission Catacombs on February 19th, 1886. This thing really is late. Check him out. And what about the human ashes? I can examine these as well. Cre cremated earthly remains of a person. Someday they'll refer to these as cremains, but you will not approve. <laughs> Let's leave them alone for now. I maybe imagine there's somewhere else we could scatter those. Uh, and then let's read the scroll. You scrape the largest of the giblets off the scroll and read it. it. Says to take a pile of human ashes, spread them out in the shape of a person inside a red chalk ritual circle, then sprinkle them with stardust and place a mostly perfect glass sphere where the heart would be. Anyway, that's the gist of it. The actual text has a lot more of these and thous and such like that. Plus there's a bunch of weird gibberish you're supposed to say out loud while you're doing it. Weird garbage stuff. A couple of gold teeth here, too. So clearly I gotta find somebody to sell all my garbage to. I don't know who that's gonna be yet. Uh, let's head back on the map, though. I think I wanna go over to, uh... I don't wanna go... You know, I'm gonna go back to Dirtwater real fast. We didn't really, uh... 
fully examine this place. You see a glint of light in the distance. When you get closer, you realize that it was the sun reflecting off the lens of a discarded pair of binoculars on the ground. Oh. These'll come in yeah, these'll come in handy because they'll come in pairs because they wouldn't be my nice, guess yeah. <laughs> Discover a new map location if you can set a high vantage point. Cool. Well that's neat. See so, yeah, I want to get on top of a mountain or something, clearly. Back to dirt water. I've got stuff to do here, I'm pretty sure. And uh, that's, I think, the only new thing in there. Let's go to the mercantile. I'm sure I can sell shit there. Dirtwater Post Office, sponsored by LT&T. Late stage capitalism. Hello there, welcome to Dirtwater Mercantile. Okay, here we go, shop menu. So, we have a bunch of shit to sell. We can sort by lettering and by meat value. Let's see. And I think it'll tell me, like, what, yeah, the description here. So this, we just sell these, right? Sell the gold tooth. I think we sell the skull chips as well, and probably the skeleton bone. And then what else? Nasty ring I think I keep. I'm wearing most of this stuff, right? Just sell it. Just sell the unrefined meat nugget. Can do. And then, was there anything else? The filthy porcelain cow, which I currently have equipped. Uh, Vienna blood sausages is actually a consumable item. A plate of slop for one. All right, sweet. Advanced bean craft. New, uh, oh, a new bean slinging skill. This seems pretty good. A cookbook specializing in bean recipes. I can afford it. I should probably get this, right? Why is this so expensive? That's so weird. I'm gonna buy that, yeah. New, new bean slinging skill sounds really, really good for me. Let's do it. There's a recipe for a wall-shaped pile of beans that looks pretty interesting. Gives bean wall, a spell that will create a wall of beans that provides cover from ranged attacks. A list of meditation techniques to help you concentrate while cooking. So this is, okay, so I get to choose a skill. Use the old bean, increases your mysticality or bean golem. Summons a powerful, oh fuck yes! You practice making servants out of beans until you're pretty good at it. Unfortunately, one of your earlier experiments gets a little rowdy and eats the book. Bad golem! Bad! Naughty! Well, I mean, I, I guess I should have expected that. Various groceries. Assorted comestibles. Miscellaneous provender. Sundry provisions. Impressive synonyms. In we go. Dirtwater Post Office. Hey, buddy. Mmm. Nope. No mail for you. Damn. Big tab in the lot post office box is one of those newfangled telegraph machines. I'm still looking for pins, or not for pins, for needles to pick locks. This girl is selling some flowers. Of course we'll buy some. Lost 50 meat, got some sweet smelling flowers. Wonderful. Plus 15% stench resistance. Oh. That's not really all that handy, but I feel good for supporting her uh, entrepreneurship anyway. Howdy, are you the sheriff here? No, we don't currently have a sheriff. Uh, I'd like to be the sheriff. Uh, uh, do you have any law enforcement experience? Uh, not really. Have you been to sheriff school? No. Do you have an existing relationship with Dirtwater's local government? Are you familiar with all the local ordinances? Do you even live here? Uh, uh, uh no. Then what, may I ask, in tarnation makes you think you'd be qualified to be the sheriff? I, I just, I just assumed. You just assumed? You can mosey into town and become sheriff on your first day? Well, when, when you put it that way, uh... <sighs> Fad five me forever one eye protagonist looking kid who wandered in here thinking they'd be the most important tater foot to ever strap on iron. I wouldn't need this dead end clerking job. It's okay. Like I said, it happens all the time. I guess you, I could help, maybe. Yeah, sure, if you're any good with a gun, there's always somebody in need of justice. A lot of posters back there, sales are over yonder. Well, all right. You seem a bit more competent than the previous sheriff. Especially considering you've got four locked cells, but wait a minute. This empty cell is all ghostly. For ghosts? Patrons? Well, not patrons, I guess. More like residents. It's a wanted poster. No, it's a wasted poster. Wasted. The stripy hat gang for grand theft pain and tasteless hat vandalism. Uh... Dirty, rotten paint thieves and low-down, no-fashion-sense hat vandals. Despicable. That sounds fun. Let's go after them. Cavern Canyon. Wanted poster if accuracy is impo important here. Or impotent if accuracy isn't important. The House in the Desert Gang. For mortgage payment, squatting. Not they're, not... they're wanted for mortgage payment. Also for murdering two collection agents. That's pretty important, too. 
You wonder if the house is named after them, or if they're named after the house. In any case, at least their location is unambiguous. You want to go after them? Of course. The house in the desert. All right. I just want... I'm just leaving. I'm just leaving. I'm sorry. Don't mean to bother you no more. Also an empty cell? Also an empty cell. All right. I, I figured maybe they'd pull the grocery store thing on me and re-describe them as I went. Anything else here? There's a vacant... Oh my god. Vacant lots available throughout the whole city. Interesting. This makes me believe firmly that we will be, uh... Not a lot available past this point. <laughs> Uh, it makes me firmly believe that we will be unlocking new buildings here in Dirtwater, but I guess that's all we have to do for now. Let's go... Ooh, yeah, lots of options now. Let's stay close to home, I suppose, and uh, go to Desert House. They say you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but when you see someone wearing dark cultist robes, it seems like a pretty safe bet that there's some sort of cultist. Another clue is the fact that he or she is trying to teach a skeleton how to tap dance. At least that's what it looks like from here. Gotta fight him. Oh, hey, Pete, you're alive. Good to see. 19 out of 19 hit points. I'm beginning to believe maybe my uh, use of the dynamite was premature. Let's summon the bean golem. Cost 2 AP, why not? See how effective that is. Looks like a lot of fun, and I can still use my melee attack as well. Let's do it. Yes! Okay, hit him with the lantern. Maybe it'd probably be better to focus on the necromancer herself, considering I assume she'll still be summoning things. Plus three to all stats. Oh, go Bean Golem, yes! That was awesome. Okay, I do not deal as much damage as I thought I did, so I guess I'll just hit him with this. And then the lantern will probably still be- oh, wait, no, it's not gonna hit for nearly as much as I thought. How about I reassure instead? Let's get- oh, what? Oh, no! Whoops. That was... That was a goof. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, big old stat buff to the necromantic cultist. Now I know I can do that at least. Okay, let's hit him with the lantern. My bad. This bean golem seems to be doing a really fine job though. Nine damage with the whack. Holy crap. Staying alive too. Okay, we got it. I like that move. You beat the heck out of that cultist. Fortunately for him, there's a handy supply of unbroken bones available. Unfortunately for him, you've yoinked his bones manu manual, or whatever this is. Introductory next mex. And off to the desert house. As you dismount and approach the house where the bandits are holed up, you hear a voice from inside say, What was that? Looks like you're going to have to be sneaky if you want to avoid a full-on fracas. Wait, really? Yes, sneaky is my middle name. <laughs> thank you for- Thank you for just accepting it and not questioning further. Uh, gives you the Grin and Skull skill. Well, duh, yeah, I'm gonna read that. This seems like it's pretty dangerous. Yeah, whatever, Grandma. You cannot see the words on the pages, but you can nevertheless read them. Your mind becomes stained with grim secrets. As you turn over the last page, the book vanishes in a puff of black smoke. The Grin and Skull skill, oh boy. Oh boy, all right, well, off we go then. Sneaky, sneaky Pete. Sneaky Pete! That's a, a verbiage that sounds familiar. From the sound of it, you say that this doghouse contains an angry dog. Weigh your options. You're not going to be able to get past it without alerting the gang inside the house. Oh, fine. Oh, I didn't realize that was bringing the gang on. I thought it was fighting the guard dog. Well, shit. Okay, then. Uh, what does this do? 12 spooky damage with the grinning skull. Or I summon my golem again, which I really enjoyed last time. So I'm pretty sure I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And, uh, off we go with the melee attacks. Coffee House, Art House, and Rufus Rough House. Great names. They are, are, they're all fairly similar. They've got the same moxie, so... I think I'm gonna go for the weakest one first to get the numbers advantage, if possible. Uh, I like the stat boost, actually, for myself as well. Let's do that. You can do it, you frog dude, hip frog! Eight damage to Pete. He's dead. Oh, this is bad. Oh boy. Well, at least I got the stat bonus up. Okay, I can take him out, obviously, but I deal 8 to 9 da 9 to 10 damage to this target, actually. Oh boy. Uh, well, let's get the numbers advantage before the golem takes another shot. And he is sort of being a tank for me, so that's really working out quite nicely. How much damage do you do to these guys? 11! Wow! So he's probably going to be able to kill that one. Let's just let him do that very thing if I can. I, I mean, I had a chance to kill this guy, I guess, which might have been worthwhile, but I'm pretty sure he's going to survive. Maybe even survive around beyond this. And there it goes. 
Oh my goodness. This golem is wonderful. Stay alive, buddy. Yes. Yes. What a monster. Justice has been served to the old house gang. I got a bag of ears and such. Desert gang six gun and a black hat. Cool. Plus one armor from the black hat. Plus one mysticality from that. So I suppose it's a better choice for the mean or uh, for the moment. Plus one moxie from the desert gang six gun, which is clearly an improvement over my deputy pistol. So there we go. And then a bag of ears and such. Probably just need to carry that back to town, right? You didn't feel like carrying the entire house in the desert gang back to town, so you just took a few bits. I see. The dog has wandered off in search of some better masters. That's a good- that's a good boy! That's a good pupper! Can we get in here? Nothing doing in this place? Alright. This might have just been... for the fight alone. Yeah, I think it might have been. Okay. Anywhere to dig up or anything like that? What do you think, Pete? Looks like you showed him bandits a thing or two, boss! And now I'm gonna show him a jail cell. What else you gotta say? What do you think we should do next? Right now, if you're in a hurry to push west, I'd say a train will get you there. I uh, keep forgetting you've told me that already. Ask for another suggestion. Told the bartender in the jewel saloon that you tried to fix their broken piano player. Oh, he actually just does like tell us things that we can do. He's not, not just crazy Pete. I appreciate that. Let's go, Gorse. Uh, I could, uh, yeah, you know, let's just head back to Dirtwater real fast and turn in this mission. That seems like a smart idea. Go over to the sheriff. And, uh, what did I need to fix up the player, piano player? I think I needed, like, a... A particular skill, right? I need, uh... Oh, I need a needle. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Okay, back out we go. Door's right here. It's pictured. And... Over to the jail. Hey, lady. Give her what's left of the desert house gang. Well, this... Pardon me. <laughs> this is uh, certainly a bag of severed ears and teeth and such. Which gang was this? I'll take your word for it. Good job. 33 experience. Oh, we got a lot now. I can upgrade my uh, lava fava. I can also upgrade my bean golem. Another level of grin and skull makes that pretty strong. Summons a small-ish bean golem. I like this idea, actually. I'm pretty damn sure I want to make this thing stronger than a mid-sized bean golem next. I want to see what the big boy is. We gotta work on this one, man. That seems great. How much experience do I have left? I got 21. I could upgrade another thing, maybe even a stat. Grit, gumption, and glamour. Are these worthwhile? This is a pretty substantial upgrade. Plus 3 speed, plus 2 AP. I mean, I get another action point from this, so that's... That's pretty awesome. I think I'm gonna take that real quick. Just get that extra action point and make things... Fantastic, and then... Item, find, item finding bonus could be nice, too. I think we'll hold off on the, uh... On the level up here, I wanna- I wanna get that next level of Bean Golem. Let's go to 300 experience and just have the most fantastic companion of all time. Not that Pete is, you know, I don't wanna sell him short or anything. Let's go to Snake Pit Mine, that sounds like fun. I'm digging this new map setup where we can have those like FTL style events as we go from place to place. You discover what is either an open grave or a very deep and rectangular pothole. Well, if it's a pothole, it must have been here a very long time because you found the remains of an antique traffic accident. Scold ships, handful of old coins, and an old wedding ring. Hooray! It's a bunch of garbage. And we made it to Snake Pit Mine. It's an exposed meat vein. Oh, I bet I can find, like, a meat pickaxe or something and try to harvest there. You have no idea what any of it does. Explain it to Pete. Hey, Pete, I just want to tell you about this mining stuff. Uh, okay. So this first machine here, this, this is an automatic jack rock. It's a uh, smelter... smelter. Pete stares at you blankly. I move on to the next machine. And, and this thing over here, uh, this thing is used to extract asymmetric meat and, 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 then, and then flatten it. Pete sighs. And then this third machine, this is uh, a, a sedimentary clay presser. Um, it, it converts shale into a accreted mud isn't that interesting i got a, i got mine splinter <laughs> are you finished i am done i am done thank you you'll gain xp when you interact with mining stuff hell yeah totally worth it although i thought this would be maybe mining stuff what about this m meat vein right here no that doesn't count all right probably a pretty substantial upgrade for us though i'd say 
Let's get into the, uh, get into the mine proper and see if maybe we can take advantage of that new perk. You can see a snake coiled up in the little hole. We could just, we could just leave it alone, right? Let it be. Overflowing with rubble. Unrefined meat nuggets, and I got, ooh, yeah. Nice. Five experience points for that is pretty awesome. There is a smoking snake in this smoking hole. A cache of mining supplies. Thermos of spiked coffee, a sulfur match, and a can of kerosene. I got a whole bunch of stuff here. Uh, combat item. Increase our speed by one. Weakens foes and makes them flammable. And an old wedding ring, which I can just sell for meat, I guess. Yeah, right, we got a bunch of garbage that we can get rid of later. Full of snake eggs. Oh, a pick! Yeah, I had a feeling I get a pickaxe at some point here. Nice, and there's an open meat vein right here, too. Let's do it. Mine it out. P points out some meat you missed. Got an unrefined meat nugget and some more experience. Man, this is great. Okay, let's go ahead and try to pull out the snake eggs here. Got the jump on them this time. Let's see. They've each only got one hit point. So... I mean, I guess I just attack him, right? I do have three action points. And, uh, I can summon the golem and not end my turn. I'm assuming I'm gonna be able to, like, kill these guys before they hatch. Or, like, that's probably the plan here. Or maybe uh, if I... Well, I don't know. Let's just try this and see what happens. Smash! Go, golem, go! Ah, okay, yeah, they hatch really quickly then. Real fast, but wow, that thing is strong! Holy shit, it just one-shot that! What on earth? Okay, 10 spooky damage is still not really necessary. I can do a lava fava, though. And the baby coal snake. 18 hit points. Uh, four hot damage there. I'm hoping that the uh, littler bean attacks this guy and gets the one-shot kill. They do hurt a little bit. Oh, he's so good! Don't have enough to use this skill. There we go with the melee attack. I love the golem. Nice work dispatching those snakes. 48 meat and a lot of experience. 54 unspent already. All right, well, let's just go ahead and take out some more snakes then. Smoking snake. 18 hit points. Pretty sure if I summon this guy again, that's basically going to take care of things. That doesn't end my turn either, so I can hit him with the spell as well. Uh, well, I don't know, actually, the hot damage may not be that good against this guy, so let's just hit him with this instead. Could have gone with the smiley, grinny face as well. Yeah, hot probably doesn't make a difference against you, does it? Oh, God, you breathe fire. Wow! Wowie, wowie, wowie. Okay, I'm glad I have my golem. Really smoke that snake. I, I mean, you didn't smoke it like you smoke a cheroot, but you just smoked, smoked it figuratively. I don't know what that is. I don't want to play, play intelligent to y'all. I don't think I need to summon this time. Let's just go ahead and light him up. Light him up! I did have, I mean, geez, it's kind of, kind of silly to not summon the thing when it's refreshing action points every single fight, and I, I don't give up my turn by summoning it, so yeah, that's totally unnecessary to pass up that opportunity, but hey, whatever, we already killed the damn thing. 11 experience for that, too. Okay, totally worth it. Let's get out of here. Mine that vein. I do need forage. How do I get foragin? I wonder how I get foragin. I don't know. I got this last vein to mine out. Obviously, a lot of meat from that, an unrefined nugget, and five more experience. This unit seems like a fine little mine, not too deep, not too cramped. Am I forgetting about anything? Let's get that saltpeter from Fort Cowardice. Yeah, all right, we're good, we're good, we're good. Sweet. Well, that went well. Let's go off to, yeah, let's go ahead and go, eh, let's go back to town. Let's go ahead and turn this in. I think we'll try to do one thing at a time here. Ooh, your keen eyes detect a secluded cave in the near distance. Exploring it would definitely be a good use of your time. I agree. Shaggy Dog Cave. I gotta go to Shaggy Dog Cave. That sounds like a good place for me to be. Oh, Pete's, Pete's upset. Hold on. What do you got? Pure courage, man. Ain't far if you have mind to check it out. Never been where it sounds a friendly type of place. Okay. Thanks to the, yeah. It's the whole new location there, too. We're just finding everything, aren't we? Shaggy Dog Cave. Is this a, is this a plaque memorial to Shaggy Dog Cave? It is. A record of the events of the expedition to and into Shaggy Dog Cave is reported by Jim Plaque Wright. There's a plaque. Having acquired through various and sundry means, a story which is interesting in its own right, but better save for another time, a map purporting to lead to a large cache of jewels and ingots of precious metals hidden by the infamous highwayman and tra train robber Black Cole Jr. 
and the years before the cows came home. I, Jim Plackright, along with three compatriots, these being Nathaniel Wyman, Cyrus Howard, and Douglas Watts, set out to find Shaggy Dog Cave in the aforementioned treasure. This is quite the, uh, quite the tale. My god. Our equipment and provisions consisted of one cart and a horse to pull it, four additional horses to be ridden, two shovels, a spade and a mining pick, a large coil of rope, one basket of large eggs, as well as an assortment of other trail provisions and cookware, my own collection of blank plaques and engraving tools, one large and shaggy dog, and a butt for. What's a butt for? That's a joke, isn't it? After traveling for two and a half days to the south and east, we arrived at a small town near Dortwater, the largest settlement in the vicinity of Shaggy Dog Cave. Leaving the watchdog to watch the horses, the four of us entered the local saloon and each ordered a beer except Sai, who was satisfied with water. Oh my god. This is ridiculous. The barman provided our drinks as requested and then withdrew a small box from under the bar asking if we care to witness something real interesting. Considering that we still had quite a few hours left to travel, we politely declined and asked him if he knew the way to Shaggy Dog Cave. He replied that he'd never been there personally, but gave us rough directions, which correlated nicely with the notes on our map. He, he etched all this into plaques, bolted them to the cave walls. This is absurd. How long does it go? I can't read all this. What is this nonsense? Do I get a reward, perhaps, for reading all the plaques? I suppose there's only six of them, so I've committed to this this point in it. Might as well go on. Upon leaving the saloon, we discovered to our dismay that some unknown villain had tampered with our wagon. Fortunately, the only supplies missing were the butt for and the entire basket of eggs, apart from that one that Doug had concealed within a pocket for safekeeping. We also discovered that the dog had, had, the dog had absconded with one of the horses, forcing Knight and Say after a drawing of lots to share. Dr read it. You know I want to read it. After acquiring a barrel of fresh water for the trip, as well as a replacement butt for, we headed out into the open desert. The sun shone down mercilessly upon us, though we took small solace in the fact that it would have been far more intolerable had we made this expedition during the summer months rather than November. In order to pass the time on the trip and resist but becoming dazed from the heat and susceptible to desert mirages, we exchanged stories for our youth, which I will not be retelling here for reasons of life. <laughs> However, I will relate to you three odd occurrences that happened to us during our trek through the desert. The first was two or three hours out of dirt water when Nate noticed a glint of sunlight upon a metallic object partially buried in the, in the sand. This was revealed to be a brass oil lamp of foreign design and manufacture which fortuitously still contained a quantity of oil. Deciding this might come in handy, we stashed it in the wagon with our other tools. Holy shit. Holy shit. There's a plaque. This is, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous, man. This is totally fucking ridiculous. I'm not reading this whole goddamn thing. This is, I, I swear to God, this is like a four essay joke that is going to result in what's a butt for. I, I swear on my fucking life that this is exactly what this is. What's a butt for? Wait for it. I am not reading all this. What is this nonsense? This whole cave is fucking absurd. No, no. There's a plaque here. Thank you for reading and may your own. I don't, I stopped carrying three plaques in, Jim Plaque, right? It's a completely empty, this whole thing results in an empty hole. They loaded the chest and began the, there's nothing here. There's nothing here. You read that whole story and there's nothing. Oh my God. I'm so glad I didn't commit fully to that. This is, this is like, it's either just a, a horrible troll or there's like some deep nuanced, subtle message hidden within all these ridiculous fucking plaques that can maybe tell you about like some amazing item in here, which God damn, what a silly thing. What a silly, silly thing. Look how long this is. We've been in here for a while, and I didn't even commit to it. Well, it seems some fellow was right in here by an exposure to a plaque. No, I'm not reading them. Fuck you, read these. No. No. I'm gone. I'm out of here. All right. Back to dirt water. Won't know unless you read them. Bunch of assholes. You hear a rustling sound and trace it to a small gulch nearby. Peeking over the edge, you see a goblin rustling around in the brush. Presumably it's a Gulch Goblin Rustler. Always kind of assumed that referred to a different sort of rustling though. Looks up and makes some angry g uh, charge at a rustling tax. Excuse me, you know there's a rustling tax levied in this gorge. You can't rustle for free here, bud. The goblin doesn't seem to understand, so you take a few minutes to communicate the concept with elaborate gestures. Eventually the goblin pays you just to make you go away. 
Well, that went well. 44 meat for free. Hooray. And now we've got, uh, we've got something to turn in here, right? Don't we? Pretty sure going back to the jail, we got, uh, some progress to make. No, we don't. Was it something... I mean, I can go to the mercantile and sell a bunch of shit, I'm sure. Maybe it was with the saloon guy. Maybe we didn't actually make any progress and we just read a bunch of plaques. That's easy to, uh, assume, I think. Heard you had something interesting back there. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Maybe my info's too old. I found a note from some travelers that passed through here about eight years ago. Oh, yeah, that was a previous bartender. He had a, a little trick he used to offer to show people. So we got him fired eventually. That senator's wife wasn't amused. Rummages around the bar for a minute, then blows the dust off a tiny piano. You can keep the piano so long as you don't go asking me about the trick. Uh, well, I gotta ask you about the trick now. I'm sorry, that's just, that's just oblig ob obligatory. I says, see you later, Lloyd, with two L's. Love it. Miniature piano. Be the right size for a foot-tall tickler of the ivories. That's beautiful language. Use it. Yeah, turn it on. The crank whines and the piano starts tinkling merrily. So merry, so tinkly! Yay! Alright. Well then. Anyway. Back to the Dirtwater Main Thoroughfare. I want to say thank you very much for watching this episode of West of Loathing. Hope you're enjoying it still. Leave a like on the video as well if you do appreciate that a lot. Plenty more things to do here. Looking forward to it. Hopefully less plaques to read. I'll see. <laughs> There's something in there, isn't there? God damn it. I'll see you next time.